Good evening, uh, Ms. Jodi, Dr. Benny, and Sarita Warrior, and uh, Meena, I mean, Bina Jacob. Good evening, and all. Good evening, uh, Ms. Sarita, are we good to go? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are good to go. Give Please. me just a minute. Good evening all. I take this opportunity to welcome our dear moderator for the day, Ms. Jyoti Jain. Jyoti ma'am, this is for you. Thank you ma'am. Good evening to all. I welcome all the dignified participants to the 169th web training series of BTAG in association with CBSE Bharat Sahodaya. Now it's my pleasure to introduce today's moderator, Ms. Jyoti Jain. She is an English educator from JBM Global School NOIDA, resource person AIEF and moderator. With an experience of more than a decade in teaching senior classes, she has been senior coordinator for the British Council for International School Awards, along with being an in-charge for comparing and coordinating many inter- and intra-school programs. She has recently completed training on mentoring teachers on competency-based education project of CBSE, which was delivered by Cambridge Education in partnership with the British Council India. She has conducted a webinar on the techniques to master writing skills for class 10 with overwhelming response. And also she was among one of the speakers in Speak to Success webinar to present her views on meditation. She believes many such opportunities have excelled her communication skills, and she is looking forward to offering her valuable service to CBSE Bharat Sahodaya as a moderator. So Jyoti ma'am, wholeheartedly I invite you to moderate this grand session. Please ma'am, over to you. Jyoti ma'am, welcome to this session. Over to you ma'am. Thank you. Thank you Sarita ma'am. Thank you so much Jarvis. Uh, thank you Sarita ma'am for your kind words indeed. Uh, beginning with the session. Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. I unquote Albert Einstein. Dear educators, Inclusive education is the most effective way to give all children a fair chance to go to school, receive a fair education, has access to technology, and learn and develop the skills that they need to thrive. In an inclusive classroom, all the students are welcome and valued irrespective of the differences. All cultures, all races, ethnicities, religions, abilities, genders, and sexual orientors, orientations are encouraged in the classroom. Most people see what it is and never see what can be. A warm welcome and a very good evening to everyone present here. Before we begin today's program, I would like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Abdul Salam and Beta for giving me this wonderful opportunity of moderating an interesting webinar today. I also extend a very warm welcome to all the participants. It is indeed a pleasure to have each one of you as an integral part of the webinar as we join together on this awesome journey of discussion on the challenges of teaching special needs children, inclusive education, a human right in the 169th web training series. Dear participants, BTAG and the CBSE Bharat Sohodia community, along with today's remarkably talented resource person, Dr. Benny Vergas, will seek to provide valuable inputs in this yet another field of education. In addition to this, training of teacher candidates on inclusive education is also crucial. In this session, we aim to resolve all the queries concerning children with special needs, gifted and talented ones, exemptions given to children with special needs by CBSE, the kind of special education 
and specialized instructions oriented to meet their needs, which help them meet their unique learning needs and provide opportunities to develop their full potential. Also, the need to empower our students to prepare them for the real world. So before we begin today's session, there are a few things that I would like to brief about. Any query during this session can be conveyed through the meeting chat box. In order to have an interactive experience, you may dispel your doubts by asking questions. Kindly virtually raise your hands and wait for your name to be called out for asking your query. Dear participants, you will have the opportunity to receive a certificate only after filling up the certificate and the feedback form. The link for which will be shared at the end of the session. Kindly stay connected till the end of the session. It gives us immense pleasure to welcome our program director, Dr. Abdul Saram Sir, the General Secretary of CBSC Bharat Sahodia Complex. At this juncture, on behalf of all of us present in the webinar, I would like to thank Dr. Saram for empowering us with such enlightening sessions. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Abdul Salam. He is presently working as the assessor of National Accreditation Board for Education and Training, Government of India. Dr. Salam has also rendered his services as the principal of Oxford School, Trivindra. He is the CBSE resource person, master trainer, CBSE deputy training coordinator of Trivindra region and patron of Bharat Sahodaya. Dr. Salam is the founder and CEO of BTAC, that is Bharat Transformer Academic Group, a consortium of educators and the teaching fraternity across the globe, connecting them together to empower the nation. Sir, it is indeed our pleasure to have your gracious presence. I would like to request you to take over and deliver the welcome address. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Jodi. Good evening, everybody. Uh, respected Dr. Benny Vogis and uh, Ms. Uh, Bena Jacob, thank you for joining, and uh, Ms. Sadiza Warrior. All the participants, hearty welcome to this 169th uh, web training series. Coming up with a uh, special topic, the challenges of children with uh, special needs. Well, uh, we know that we understand that uh, everybody has come up with uh, a lot of expectations and we will try our best to meet your expectations. And uh, as far as special needs children are concerned, we have to equip ourselves with uh, strategies in dealing with them so that uh, they will be benefited and we can also uh, you know, work at ease. The special needs children, you know, uh, every child is special, as everybody knows, every child is unique. Uh, special children may indicate uh, children who perform below our expectation and who exceedingly, you know, meet our expectations. And uh, there are strategies. We have received a lot of questions from you, and uh, uh, questions are passed on to Dr. Benny Vergis. We are very fortunate to have Dr. Benny Vergis, Benny who is also, uh, you know, uh, very experienced uh, in international education and also is closely working with the CBSE and is uh, a consultant in this field. So he will, uh, you know, uh, uh, solve all the queries, your concerns, and uh, please be interactive and wish you all the very best. Thank you so much, uh, Bina Jacob, ma'am, and uh, Dr. Benny and everybody. Thank you. Over to Jodim. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next you honor us with her presence is our distinguished joint secretary, is our distinguished guest, joint secretary of Bharat Sohodia, Ms. Bina Jacob. Mrs. Jacob is the principal of MGM International, Kili Manur. We welcome you, ma'am. 
We are extremely privileged to have you here today. I would like to invite Ms. Jacob to do a short felicitation. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Jyoti Jain. Good evening to Dr. Abdul Salam, sir. The man behind this wonderful platform of BTAC. The resource person, Dr. Benny George. Uh, Sarida, ma'am. Uh, principal, principals, teachers, uh, coordinators, and all the well-wishers of uh, BTAC. This evening is uh, special as the BTAC has come up with uh, a very special topic on the challenges of teaching children with the special needs. And while listening to the introdu introductory speech given by Sam, sir, I was uh, actually thinking of the post-COVID uh, classrooms wherein we met the students who lost their uh, academic skills, who lost their interest in studies, uh, uh, you know, somewhere addicted to the gadgets. And uh, it was hard for some students to get adjusted with a, a new situation and some children uh, become so uh, hyperactive. So it was tough time for the teachers to manage the children. And so they had an extra mile to bring all the children to on the right track. So it was a good lesson for all the teachers of this 21st century to continue learning or to learn more or to get uh, well trained. Uh, because every child yeah. is uh, valued, whether he or she is uh, talented or gifted or hyperactive or disabled or the children with uh, special needs. Uh, we have to accept all the children as they are. Uh, and getting educated is every child's right. But to teach them in a proper way, in a balanced way, it is a challenge. So here comes the importance of the... Uh, concept of inclusive education, a system of teaching or learning, including all students. But if our knowledge is uh, incomplete or if our knowledge is uh, limited, the concept of inclusive education uh, will be an utter failure. So understanding this, BTAC is providing a wonderful platform wherein we discuss the challenges and also the strategies to overcome the challenges. So we have the right person, Dr. Benny uh, Varghese with us. He would surely guide us to a very successful inclusive classroom. So dear friends, let's learn together the tips to become a vibrant, positive, a successful teachers. So thank you and have a nice weekend. That was truly enlightening. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to turn our attention to our main attraction of today's webinar. Joining us today is a highly skilled and talented registered psychologist, disability, disability specialist, certified career planner and trainer, and CBSE tele counselor, Dr. Benny Burgess. Dr. Benny Burgess was associated with the Village International School, Kodukuza, Kerala, as the vice principal, Indian Musket School as the student counselor, Hanal, a psychological institute, Kerala, as director, and with Kerala Police and other medical and paramedical colleges. With a strong educational background of PhD in psychology and diploma, in naturopathy. He is also certified in management and training for learning disabled conducted by Indian National Portage Association. An administration and interpretation of Indian scale for assessment of autism and many more. The list is endless. He has been providing effective training programs that include inclusion challenges and strategies classroom management of inclusion students, such as ADHD students, ADD students, and many others in the repeated schools across the globe. As a student counselor, he was involved with CBSE documentation for inclusive children 
for CBSC board examinations of classes 9th to 12th and also coordinated with the career aptitude test results and analysis for class 10th. With his extensive experience, diverse skill set, and passion for teaching, he is committed to make a positive impact in the lives of students and educators alike to promote their well-being. We are honored to have you with us today, sir. On behalf of everyone present here, with all respect and regards, I welcome you, sir, and request you to take over the proceedings for the evening. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So respect uh, teachers and my dear friends. And I know it's a difficult topic to be dealt with because a lot of resistance are there everywhere. Because 2005 onwards, I'm directly, and 2006 to seven became a faculty of Muscat International School. Uh, that's called, I, we call it IASM. And from there, we under the embassy, we had 21 Indian schools and other parts of the schools were having different questions, how to accommodate these children. Now, as a whole, I want to tell you, it is just like a coconut. As we peel off the coconut, we understand the sweet of the material. Because we have learned a lot about our classroom, classroom strategies and other things. But it is always difficult to deal with a special child along with other students of the classroom. But to me, I have felt and I was guiding teachers from 2007 onwards till now. Even last week, I had a program with uh, one of the schools. Even few students are coming home. I am taking two clients a day. So these things are possible according to me. I was into Delhi side, to Gujarat side to teach different strategies so that now the state board of Gujarat has come to know how the inclusion can come in. Now the ICAC also started, but CBSC is already in with the inclusion strategies. Now I am going to share my slides. Shall I? Please go ahead, yes, sir. Yes. Can you see the slide? Uh, not visible yet, sir. No. Stop, share, and share again, probably. Okay, I will stop once again. Yeah. It is visible now, sir. Yes. Is it uh, clear? Yes, sir. Very much clear. Yes. Now the topic. Sir, uh, excuse me. Can you switch over to the slide mode? Slide Full screen. Slide. Slide show. Uh, slide show. Uh, okay, one minute. Am I clear now? 
So it's same, sir. You can go to slideshow and uh, you can click start from the beginning. Slideshow. It's there on top. I have closed it. Top, uh, after seventh or eighth icon, sir. Slideshow. Now it's clear. We can see the screen, sir. No, what is the problem? I do not understand exactly. So if but it I is in the slideshow, the screen will be full. We can watch it on now, full screen. Now it's full? Uh, not yet, sir. So it's eighth icon on the top orange bar. The top bar, which is orange in color, eighth icon slideshow, you can click on that. Oh, you can plus yes, control plus F5. Yeah. Thank you. Control plus F5. What about now? Uh, no. Can you uh, try keeping, I mean, changing the slide if it is working or not? Uh, let us see. Can you go to it's the next changing. slide? It's working. So go ahead, sir. No problem. Yeah. But any, from my side, I can see full slide. That's right. Acha, okay, okay. Go ahead, sir. No problem. Okay. The challenges of teaching special needs children. Now, one side, whoever come to the school at present, especially in CBSC, as mandatory to welcome them to our school compound or the classroom setup. Teacher cannot say, this child is this, 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 as Jyoti ma'am has rightly said it. No discrimination can be made. Now the challenge comes for a teacher, how to accommodate. Something new skill has to come in. Another energy, different energy, or a determination to deal with has to come in. Now the strategy. A plan of action has to be decided for it. Now, we are going to see different types of challenges. Why I'm saying different types of challenges? Because uh, we are going to see certain types of disabilities in our classroom together with other children. Now, in all the children, we will see some sort of traits that doesn't mean they are uh, they are disabled children. If properly they are tested and certified, and a benchmark system is made for a child to be special, then only the concession of CBSC will be granted to them. Otherwise, usually we say they have the trait in them, but doesn't meet the criteria of the disability. Now comes to first area is dyslexia. See, we have seen the film uh, Tare Zaminpa. For the counselors, for the psychologists, it has become easier to convince both the teachers and the parents regarding the disability. And dyslexia is a problem with learning difficulty primarily affects the skills involved in accurate and fluent word reading and spelling. Now, leave those here. Let us come to exact symptoms. They read slowly, painfully. Problems with spelling. Difficulty in applying phonics. Word receive, uh, reversals, confusions with the similar words than pure comprehension or retention of the material. Now, I have just read the area. Now, in our classroom, we know there are students with different challenges. Now, coming to the first area, a disabled child, if not slow learner, or now we say as students of determination, their IQ may be low, 
others will be as far with our students or above the iq so don't underestimate that the students of dyslexia is having low iq no the iq level is appropriate only thing is they need different way of discussion things now when we look at them they appears to be bright intelligent and articulate properly but they will be unable to read write spell at great level so this grade has to be assessed by a teacher directly or indirectly indirectly if there is a direct challenge based one the uh, test materials are all, uh, yeah, yeah we can get the test materials everywhere now they may be lazy uh, labeled as lazy dumb then careless immature etc etc but always remember they are listening to you but the only thing is their expressive learning both writing and oral may have little challenges now they may be good in drama and other carry extra curricular activities in house or outer house they may be very good in but in the classroom they may be like daydreaming and easily distracted and sometimes they may see us hyper and learns best through hands on experience that means a teacher has to bring in certain types of demonstration the teaching style has to be come into a greater world now while reading the child may say the child is facing with head a dizzy in a stomach ache etc etc lot of challenges why because the child doesn't want to read in the classroom if the teacher asks the child to read in the classroom it is always difficult for the child if the teacher finds that the child has a problem i may be i may say it is a strategy please don't ask them to read and put them into play what do you say what do you say they may feel ashamed to read well and they may have confused by letters numbers sequence as we have seen in the movie that is a mean pearl the words were spellings were flying etc etc these are really felt by the students of dyslexia and they we may see that they may have visual challenges they may have but no so always better to take the dyslexia dyslexic child if testing is coming we have to rule out with vision that means there is no problem in the vision area or gliding area then auditory so automatically so, so, sorry to interrupt yeah. is your slides are not yeah. moving if you can change your slides long side it's not moving no no we are still seeing the first slide okay now can you see the movie uh yes sir they are moving yeah sorry can i continue please carry on sir thank you okay now the they uh, we have to rule out by with the physicians whether they are having auditory challenges or visual challenges usually they will not have it is felt by us and the child or maybe the parents so automatically in order to get tested properly we have to convince the parents for that we teachers have to be uh, understandable with this we know thoroughly the child doesn't have a problem but it is always better before the remedy starts rule out that there is no physical challenges faced by the child now for example hearing why i have told 
there is a problem. We are saying something, they hear something, and they interpret differently. There are little problems, right? And in walking also, vision also, they may reading wrongly. For example, now I am reading difficulty putting thoughts into words. They may read difficulty distracted uh, in halting by sounds, thoughts into words. That means they may have gliding wording. That means they may go up, down, and other words may be read together. So they may have problems. So in order to start, the remedial sessions, always better to rule out with visual and auditory doctors. That means ENT and ophthalmologist have to be met by a child. That is what I always do. Why I'm saying it is only to rule out. We are not telling the parents that the child is having a problem. Instead of that, we want to rule out certain area because the child is having certain, certain problems. Now, strategies for students with dyslexia. Now, we have to check whether the child know 26 letters of capital and small. It is always good to write. Then word formation. Send information. Now, respected teachers, first of all, I want to tell you, the student, all the students of your class, maybe 25 to maybe 60 students may be seated in your classroom. These students should be familiar with your way of speaking, writing, etc. How you write a letter. It should be known to your ward because many of the schools, wherever I go for teaching the teachers or teacher orientation program, we, I am making them write capital ABCD and small ABCD. And when I fold the letter and show it to different teachers, they read it differently. It is not correct that a teacher starts the class immediately. We cannot blame the teacher or the student. Now, the teacher style should be known to the child. So in the first one or two day, the teacher may get familiarized with the students and help the students with the material. Why? Because the writing or speaking way, the tone, everything should be known to the world. Now, writing on SAT. So spelling is finished. Now writing on SAT. When a child is having a problem of writing, proper writing, see, in the beginning, for example, me, I have gone to we call in Kerala, Ashan, who teaches on the sand. And our fingertips, this pointing finger is taken on the sand and it's written. Now, when we compare to uh, current scenario, the students are holding the pencil in the beginning, not with a hand writing. Uh, but in the Northern uh, North India, we can see they are using dust. Uh, duff, other things, etc. But I will say always, so always good for any children. For example, when we are any teachers are the prime, pre primary or primary teachers, for them it is good to make them write on the sand if you find that the child is not able to write properly. Why? Because from the fingertip directly the impulsive nature, the neurons may work and it will be pasted in the brain. The writing on relaxed part of the body. Now, when we see that the child knows the spelling, but child is not a no, child doesn't know to read or write properly, always 
better to relax. It is in a therapeutic mood. We usually you do, we do. Uh, in the classroom, it is very difficult. But still, if a remedial teacher is among you, you can ask the child to be relaxed and write on the palm. Just write palm. The eyes will be the child of the eyes will be closed, and you will spell as a. Whatever letter you are writing, slowly the child imagines how the letter is being molded, and child gets tasted. Why I am saying such a way? This is a way we do in the therapeutic environment, but. Writing till stand can be done in the school setup. Writing on a body can be personal setup. Now, rhythmic recitation of alphabets. That is being usually we do in the pre-primary, primary, where we will have rhythmic movements and the recitation of alphabets and vice versa. Then the game scrabble is also very good strategic as well. Now. In the classroom environment, as you teachers. Now, when in the primary providing a buddy, we have to be very careful because buddy always uh, dominate with other other activities of a child. But in the senior classes, we have seen in the classroom environment, in the teaching, a Good child or a studious child is sitting beside a sent child. That means student with special need. A child seated, so automatically the teacher teaches and the other child take care of the writing part or reading part of it. So the buddy provides anything and everything to the special child. Now give think time. Why I am saying give think time? When we ask any children in the class, don't expect a immediate answer. Let them slowly stand up and let them say the answer. Now, in the special cases, special children, sometimes they may simply stand up, they may not open. Then you can ask them, you have heard about something? You know these things? Now you speak on your own words and answers. Now, let us all hear them, hear you. Now, slowly, slowly, with your assistance, the child will be able to say something, but it may not be bookish answer. But the child will answer whatever you are saying. But always remember, they have the problem of receptive and expressive learning. So, they may switch over from word sentences, etc. That doesn't mean that they have not understood what you have taught. Now, break down large projects into smaller tasks. Usually, in the smaller classes, it is always good. Now, when I am telling you teachers, for example, a teacher of six standard, seven standard, eight standard, I am taking them as a whole. For example, a social science teacher or of seventh standard should have a discussion with sixth standard and should have a discussion with the eighth standard social science teacher. Now, why it is so? See, there are chapters. Everything we have to learn, we have to understand, and we have to uh, write for the examination or prepare for the examination sake. See, generally, we should know everything. So, there are things which a, a child should know. So, teacher should be aware. Now, teacher should bring, uh, carry forward. For example, seven, six standard was taught, seven standard is coming, eight standard, it's further will be taught. Those chapters has to be clearly understood by the child. Otherwise, little bit challenges may vary, but certain things we have to teach such a way that we can skip 
large portions of seven, eight pages of a lesson. Why? Because when we have inclusion children in our classroom, we will not be able to go by word to word. So I will say there should be an understanding between six, seven, eight, any classes you take, you will take a 12 standard, automatically 11 standard should be there. Because what should be carried, what the child know, they should be clearly understood by the teacher. Otherwise, for example, I am teaching them something. I should know what is the preposition, what the child knows about. Previous class, what are the child have learned from the previous teacher? It should be known. For that, the discussion between the previous and the uh, coming teacher should be known to the teacher who is teaching currently in the classroom. Why I am saying it helps the teacher to uh, give importance to important materials of the lesson and other things can be run out or carried out. Or maybe, uh, what do we say, uh, skipped on. Now, study with headphone. Now, students with dyslexia always better to have headphones because not only with uh, students with uh, dyslexia, but hyperactive also. Headphone is good so that minimize the other sounds. They may not have any challenges with other sounds. Now, according to CBSE, when we look, they will get extra time. For example, I am in the school, CBSE school setup from 2006 onwards. Now, they clear, it is clearly mentioned in, in the right of CBSC, the child will get extra time of 15, half an hour, 45 minutes, one hour, according to the grade. Three hour examination, one hour extra is given. Same way it is diminished. So why I'm saying such a way? So that they may think and write. And these papers may be specially evaluated. The CBSC also, we may, you may, the principals may be think, uh, may be aware. We are sending the special papers separate cover so that it is going to a separate hat, and it is be looked leanly by because spelling error, other things will be uh, taking care of these things. We will see in the CBSC examination and. If you further, if you find any difficulty, always better to meet with a special educator or a remedial teacher or a psychologist or a counselor of your school or your head of the department or the vice principal of the principal because the hierarchy should be followed because each school have different way of doing it. Now we are coming to next area, this graph here. It is a writing difficulty. It is a neurological disorder. So they may have a proper writing challenges. So the writing may be distorted or maybe in that, what is a distorted or may have some sort of challenges. Unfinished work may be there, but we know that child is expecting to write properly. Now, we give chances. We uh, will say example for later. Now, this, gra uh, this graph here, unfinished words or letters or omitted words. This will be common trend for any dysgraphia child. Inconsistent spacing. Now, when we are looking to the new children. Please, the teachers of primary, pre-primary teachers should take care. There should be proper margin. There should be space between words, words. Because nowadays, the if you ask the students of tall standard to write, they will not put margin. There won't be a proper space between words. So this should be taught properly by the pre-primary, primary teachers. 
because middle and senior teachers may not get adequate time for that. But till the teachers of fifth to eight, nine should be very careful, especially English teachers, so that they are the people who has to be precise in this area. They should not make any negotiation for these papers. Now, why I am saying, then it is easy to find out the children with dysgraphia. Why they will have, though the teacher is very much, very strong, very strict, but the child will have the spacing challenges. Now, why I am saying such a way, common children also are having this problem, especially after post COVID. There are a lot of problems faced by the children. Now, exhibit what is a strange wrist. Nowadays, the writing style of many children have changed. As I have rightly put on the picture, the way the child is writing, everything differs. Now, different way they write. But I will say in the pre-primary or maybe primary one and two, we can correct the finger holding pen or the wrist. After three, please don't correct the children because it is almost habituated. It will be difficult for the children to rechange. Unlearning is easier in the pre-primary and primary. I will say, ask the child to be seated in your lap by the pre-primary teacher, especially the lady teacher, and properly hold the pencil so that the wrist of the hand is proper and writing method. Some students may write very strongly, some may write slow, uh, what is say very slightly. That also should be corrected by. Why I'm saying such a way, it is seen in common children. Now, in this dysgraphy children, we see little more highly. And difficulty in sequencing, that is a common error seen. And problem is uh, framing letters, spacing, capital, punctuation, they will have a lot of challenges. Then trouble in writing copy. These children will have writing challenges. They will not complete the notes. They will not copy from the blackboard or whiteboard by which you are using the school. So automatically give them the time not hurting other children. So they will complete the portion by next Monday and submit you. Why? Because other children should not lose their time. Now, pencil grip is unusual. Now, this is a pencil grip. <coughs> In this pencil, there is no pencil grip. Now, when we hold it properly, Usually, dysgraphic children, many times, pencil may fall down. So, different pencil grips can be used. See, I have showed here different pencil grips that are available in the market. Get it and please use it. Because this, because the child is not able to hold the pencil. Now, nowadays, the triangle pencil is also available in the market. It is easy for the pre-primary children. But Again, if you take round pencil and uh, squares, some sort of different pencils are available in the market. Please, round uh, pencils for pre-primary, primary children are not good according to me. Now, they have always, they may be saying when you are writing, they will say they want to go for one or two in the classroom because they will have more often sickness. They are not actually having it, but they want to go because they want to escape from writing. Then they have the problem of confusions with right and left. Even in the driving, the senior people, we have many of the problems, but exactly this we are not bringing here, but they may have a problem in the later stage, but when you write left and right in the smaller class, please show your right or left hand so that they may understand properly. Then 
uh, writing shows repetition, addition, transpositions, etc. These are common errors seen in the dysgraphia child. Now the primary evaluation. Now, as we have seen in the dyslexia, alphabets, vision, auditory, these things are ruled out. Then hand movements, that is, uh, wrist is being taken care, how the things are there. Then finger pain. Certain children will have pain in the finger. So always better to refer them to OT. Now, gross muscles we send to physiotherapist. This is we are sending them to occasions, uh, occupational therapist. That is, they are called OT. It is very rarely seen, but in every town we can see. Why I'm saying they have to remove the pain from the tip. Now, for simple matters, we can remove this pain by playing very frequently this way. And stress ball can be skewed, or maybe in the dough, some debts can be, they will be pulling out or taking out these things. And the hand pain can be a little bit removed. But again, in the dysgraphia child, the pain will be more. So automatically better to refer them to a occupational therapist that's called OT. Then holding pencil, the teacher should be very careful. Then the grip, if the children are not getting proper grip, the grip can be put in and automatically they can use it properly. Then so that the frequent fall of the pencil can be rectified. This proper what is a fall of the pencil is there. Now, in the classroom, especially in the primary, pre-primary children, we will ask, okay, we are going to write, please take the notebooks. Children will look and they will blame, oh, I forgot to bring the book. But literally, I am saying to you, primary, pre-primary teachers, it is there in the back. Please, if they say no, they have forgotten, please, you also check in because Student with dyslexia, dysgraphia, or lazy student. I will not say only the disabled children. They will say the pencil, the bag, the book is not there. So automatically they will escape. And the second challenge uh, that come, we come across is the parents are not ready to accept. You know, Dr. Benny, please uh, start. Please share your PPT. Some technical issue happened in between and uh, the Zoom was cut off. Okay. Welcome back, Dr. Benny. Yes. Sorry, Jodi, I had to interrupt you. No issue, sir. I completely understand. Can you see? Not yet, sir. Can you see? Not yet. Hey, Please do stop share and probably try sharing again. So yes, uh, meanwhile, Sir is sharing the screen. Uh, we were discussing about the challenges of identification and the acceptance by the parents. That is one thing that I feel that, yes, definitely it's a challenge for the parents as well to accept. Uh, that their child is a special need child. It is very, very difficult. Yes, I think we can see sir screen. Sir, it disappeared again. Can you see? No, sir, your screen is Hello. not. Hello. 
So your screen is not visible. Can you see the screen? He's no, stuck sir. Here. Uh, so screen is not no? visible. Oh, yes, yes it, it is visible, sir. It is visible. Okay. I think heavy rain is going on here. That may be the reason. Okay. I hope our all participants understand. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, participants. Uh, till where have you heard? So you were discussing yeah, about the uh, dyslexic uh, child, the children, and you were talking about the therapy. Uh, dysgraphia, you did not hear? Dysgraphia, we did. We heard, sir. Dysgraphia, yeah. we heard. Okay. You were talking about the uh, tools available yeah, yeah. in I the market. I understood. Yeah. So automatically, uh, now, uh, shall I continue? Yes, sir. Please. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, okay. Now, there are a lot of challenges happened even in this system. Now, in our classroom, these sort of challenges can happen because of the special children in the classroom. Now, we have to give them a response sheet where they may write, tick and paste on the book. Other children will be writing exactly. Now, even I will say, dysgraphia children can be given exemption so that they can take the photo start copy and paste those things in the book and submit to the teacher. So it may be the handwriting of the parent or maybe other child. It may not be written by this. It can be usually permitted by the school because later stage, they will be using the scribe. Only I am saying about dysgraphia child. Why I'm saying then the teacher is not struggling with the writing part of this child, special child. Because if teacher wants the child to complete the notes, the child teacher has to wait and wait and wait. So it may affect the teacher's time and other normal children's time. So please discourage that. Instead of that, they can stick things in the book and submit on Monday. Usually we say weekend then Monday, so that every note is complete with the child. Then uh, limit copying from the board that I have already discussed. Then for examination, again, they are getting exact the time of the dyslexia time itself because the scribe is saying and the writing part. Sometimes dysgraphic children with much difficulty also, they may write the examinations. Because sometimes multiple uh, uh, challenges may come to a child. Sometimes the child may be not be good in oral. So automatically the oral testing may not be possible. So the child has to write. But whatever the child writes, we give mark. We don't look the sentence base, how much the child has written, etc. No, we give a great mark and promote the child so that the child is to the par with other children. Now coming to then any challenges referred to the same way we have discussed. Now dyscalculia. Dyscalculia, just I am now running with, it is problem with the math. Now major problem with the math people are, the children will not be able to write exactly what is told by the teacher. For example, the dyscalculia children may have the problem to put sentences into arithmetic numerical area or from the numerical to the writing area. So automatically there may be a challenge with which faced by the child. Child may say the problem, may not write. Sometimes problem may uh, to uh, rewrite the problem into a mathematical area, the child may have problems. So always from fifth standard onwards, we can exempt these children, but ninth and standard onwards, officially we can omit, and some may take uh, low mathematics also. But again, I will say, anyway, the student who is having this level, this calculia, better to omit math because they may not be able to deal with the general math or the low math. 
So always better to accept them from the earlier, but they may be sitting in the classroom. Now, how it will be done, I will show you later stage. Why I am saying we need only five subjects. So in the math, if you remove, we may give computer or painting any other subject as a substitute subject, and we may give scoring for that. So that subject can needs we only one. the slide, please? Change, slide is not changed. It's the same slide, sir? Yeah, okay. because uh, we have, a, at present you are seeing strategies, right? Right, right. Sir, our yeah. participants because are I... requesting for the subjects if they can be shown on the screen. Okay. Now, putting language to math process, they have the problem. So you can see information or events also is a problem or using steps involved in a math operation, it's a problem. So these are the problems faced by a child. So for them, major problem is to tell the time. It's a big problem. Can count, has difficulty in counting objects. So for example, I know to count one, two, three, but again, I am writing this part. It may be a problem for the child. So the child may have the problem anyway. Sometime the child may be able to read one, two, three, four, but with the material, they may not say. For example, now this calculate child, this is a bundle of two. No, three bundles of two comes to six, but child may not be able to. So one, two, three, four, five, six, like that, the child has to be taught. And child will say, this is the bundle of two, two, two. So this way, the primary, pre-primary teachers have to. Why I'm saying uh, skipping of this area? Because this calculator children better to accept them from fifth standard onwards, because it is always good for the teachers. Otherwise, child cannot understand any concept told by you in the classroom. Now, in the strategy area, we'll say use concrete material. For example, pre-primary, pre-primary teachers teach them with the concrete material. I'm saying concrete material, one, two, or tiles are counted, one, two. There are so many play things are being available in the market or maybe we may do in our stair. Here we am saying the staircase. For example, the climbing of the stair. One, two, three, four. How many steps you have climbed? Okay, minus two. Going down, how many stairs you have climbed? So automatically these things should be, uh, we, you should use concrete materials to make them familiar with the dyscalculia children. And I will say always, this calculator is a difficult subject to be dealt in the classroom. Why I'm saying such a way? Because many of the time, max teachers will be highly uh, in difficulty in dealing with these children, maybe class five or nine onwards. Because as the difficulty area of max get extended, the children may face. So better to give them exception from max and go ahead with that. Now, if, if you want to again say, some may be good in uh, vocabulary area, so ask them, how did you get this solution? Or how did you arrive at this solution? This can be clearly short. Or explain new concepts in a clear, clear way, connecting with the other concept. For example, a child know the subtraction, addition, multiplication, division. Now, how the child has to use in the coming uh, higher order math, then it has to be clearly told by the teacher. Now the teacher may tell repeatedly, but we'll have time. We'll have no time in the classroom setup because other children might have understood. So always better to give them remedial classes in the later stage. And as we know, they get extra time so that the teachers may should be understand they may have extra time. Now, next area is auditory processing disorder. Now, this is very rarely in our schools. See, they, they, we may say something, they may not understand exactly what is 
uh, told by them. Processing or interpretation of the frame is a problem. So I think we can skip this uh, problem makers are not there in our classrooms. Uh, sorry. Uh, now other comes language processing disorder. To extent, these children may be there in our classroom because they have the problem with expressive learning and receptive learning. For example, whatever you say in the classroom is not exactly understood by the child. And whatever the child has to write, child has to orally say, may not be told by this child. But auditory processing and language processing disorder, children are very rare in our classroom environment, but rarely they come in the picture. Now comes our primary area, attention deficit disorder. ADD one side, ADHD one side. Now, if it ADHD, because of the hyperactivity, we can know the child is having a problem. But if the child is with ADD, attention deficit disorder, it is very difficult to identify because they will be looking at the classroom, looking at the teacher, writing everything, but they may not be in the classroom. They may be daydreaming, but there may be eyes maybe with the teacher. But attention deficit, it is easy to handle. Now, I will say if <coughs> you find that some children are having a problem in the classroom, always better to have a screening test of ADHD test so that you can know whether they are having the challenges with impulsivity, hyperactivity, or inattention. These are the three areas the ADD, ADHD is having. Hyperactivity will not be there for the ADHD, ADD. Now, these similar symptoms you may see in the dyslexic children. And usually ADD, ADHD, ADD children go with dyslexia children in the remarkable systems of CBSA. Now, in the AD, ADD, a condition in which a child has problems with learning and behavior because of being unable to think about or pay attention to things very long. For example, you are saying so many things, the child may have challenges. Now, in attention deficit hyperactivity, things are getting different. A condition affecting children and adults that is characterized by problems with attention, impulsivity, and overactivity. Impulsive behavior is there. Some sort of fidgeting will be there and they may be hyper. Usually we say overactivity is hyperactivity. So we will be able to know these children. Now, when we come to this area, we have to see after, after post COVID, there are problem with the children with the problem of sitting span, attention span, a lot of impulsive behavior is there and we should not misunderstand this with this challenge because two years they were in the screen and a lot of time out were there. So in the classroom, they're having real challenge. But last year and this year, since students are with you in the classroom, you have taught them well. And now they know, they know to sit Sitting span is increased, attention span is increased, but the problem is respect towards teacher is not much increased. Why? Because the respect is being learned. And in the primary classes, we have taught them, but two years, the students were with the parents and you were on the screen teaching. Now, if the parent doesn't have the respect towards the teacher, the child has not developed the respect. So I will say, if any parent comes, always you respect them, they will respect you back, one. Second, don't tell 
that your child doesn't respect me instead of that how we discuss about his behavior back home and let you and the parent together teach the child how to deal with the respect why i am saying such a way without correcting the background the environment the child will not be able to do that otherwise very strict teacher can say you have to respect they may respect for the time sake but i will say it has to work as a group now general indication short attention span lack of concentration impulsive that fidgeting with the hands or feet difficulty remaining seated like these difficulties are there after covid post covid so please be aware of these things then difficulty sustaining attention that also after covid symptom post covid symptom also now blurting out answers now after our post covid students doesn't answer at all now uh, teachers of 9 10 11 12 you may understand that the student may not answer you anything till then they may be answering why we have to find out exact reason majority of the reason is when they are ready in the beginning after eighth standard respected teachers of ninth standard should continue good things taught in the middle school many of the time because of the rashness of the portions you may feel that it was that uh, what do you say you we may not find much time for these things but these are basic things for study human life so sustain it continue it teachers have to because a child of age standard answers well speaks everything in the class if a child march exam finish or uh, what do you say may june uh, sorry uh, april may june the child class comes in ninth standard the child doesn't answer it is a problem of i will say it's a problem of the teacher to extend so teachers should continue good things taught or carried out in the middle school or the primary now difficulty in following through uh, through on instructions and difficulty in organization organizing tasks these are common things which we see with the adhd child cannot consider consequences before acting after covid also there are students who are not thinking about the consequences teachers take some time in the beginning i will say you teachers in the beginning of the academic year write out in the board or maybe in the uh, separate board uh, where in the white sheet write with pencil what are the uh, possible behavior which you dislike with the assistance of the help and what are the consequences also please write it down so automatically they know if i am late to lab if i am late from uh, what do you say uh, pe period physical education period to my classroom what is the consequence i am going to get now why i am saying for adhd children it is very thorough to read and understand exactly they take time to understand properly why i am saying such a way majority of the time the teachers will be running out with the portions please see that the behavior of the child is also important shifting from one unfinished activity to another it is commonly seen by adhd children and also failing to give close attention to details so these are the indications which you can know from adhd child and there are students in our classroom who are not diagnosed with adhd but there are students who are not diagnosed but have adhd also why i am saying such a way as the age grew the children indication uh, certain symptoms may be lowered but in attention attention and impulsivity will be providing for example these children who doesn't 
attend the minute detail what you say will lose the depth of the knowledge what is given by to them so this have to be very carefully attended especially adhd should be treated in the primary stages especially in the class 3 uh, 2 3 4 uh, and all if the child is very hypo better to get physical uh, assessment done better to be sent to a uh, developmental pediatrician or a psychologist and do have a psychologist there are lot of limitations in medication part but though they know the medication they will not be prescribing always better to go with ayurveda homeo or allopathy but see that you don't send the child you may discuss with the parents that there are challenges with the child now how is the child in the house when you are keeping the things the beginning uh, no parents will say that they you are the child is very hyper in the classroom see for example a child in the house may be very strict the parents may be very strict too with the child child may not do much to do but the child is coming to the school to play so they will do a lot of mastis in the classroom problems in the classroom discuss with the parents there are lot of challenges and don't say what you see in the classroom instead of that how is the child's general behavior at home that can be discussed by the teacher then slowly slowly parents may tell you that the child is doing certain behaviors at home also in the beginning they may deny because of the fear they may fear they you want they may the child may get tc from the school etc etc they may not say yes but slowly you have to make them feel whatever you are facing is faced by them at class uh, what is the home or other environments than the school then slowly you can ask for the second opinion see i have this doubt you are also having now let us have a expert opinion let us send them to a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a homeopathy doctor and have a discussion and always better let them call from there the doctor may call you so that you can say you are thought process to the doctor not to the parent hearing these are the things observed by you slowly with slow medication i will say if we give proper medication in the third or fourth standard the activity level the hyperactivity level inattention level can be increased hyperactivity level can be decreased so the sitting span attention span be increased by medication 3 to 6 months etc but it has to be done in the primary stages even later stages also it is good but it is very difficult to find out the symptoms by the teacher why i am saying such a way majority of the time we see that this is the musty of the child and we don't take it seriously but i will say adhd is a very serious illness we are finding out these days so adhd adad if you find any difficulty have a discussion with your coordinator special educator or the psychologist or the counselor or your principal vice principal so over over according to protocol discuss with them and have a discussion with the parent but don't discuss there is a problem in your ward discuss only there are certain symptoms seen are you seeing these symptoms if not seen i will rectify here but slowly steadily they may have discussion be friendly with the parents they may accept tell them it is to help the ward not to punish then slowly they will accept it then ask them to take uh, get a second opinion by an expert then get medicated because adhd is a area where we need medication now another area is we have to uh, have
of more exercises. For example, in the senior classes, I have seen my personal experience, many teachers, especially physics, chemistry and maths teachers get classes period from uh, English and physical education teachers. They ask excuse and they to take the class. I will say, please, no student like to miss their PE classes. Even I was an authoritative, so I have felt many students are coming and saying, complain to me, sir, last week uh, some teacher took class, this week also the same thing, that please allow to play at least once a week. See, in the senior classes, once a week only we have PE period. So allow, be careful, we should have PE period. And when we discuss about ADHD, I, why I have discussed about the PE period, majority of the time, the children will be waiting for the PE period, physical education period. Now, a child who is diagnosed, who is having hyperactivity in the pre-primary, primary classes should have a running and energy level should be little low coming to the classroom. So always better after the assembly or the morning prayer, those children may be taken out by the PE, PD, PE teacher for a 10, 15 minutes. By the instruction, these students are back to classroom in the primary class. I am not asking middle or senior classes. Why I am saying it is not possible, it may interrupt the classroom. Other things there are, we can make, modify a lot of things. So PE period, teacher basic exercises has a lot to it. In our childhood, during our assembly, we will have the stretching programs in the class our, during the assembly after prayers. Nowadays, these things are not there. I will say it should be also incorporated. And also the yoga for ADHD, ADD children are good. And now coming to the classroom in the senior classes, even primary and middle also, please use the classroom in such a way that everything is systematized. If you find that there is a student of ADHD or ADD in your classroom, you have to make them sit properly. So select seating arrangement wisely for them. Always better the front row, first seat, maybe from the middle, first seat, so that teacher is more close to that child. That is called select seating wisely. So that the child's movement may not be, maybe not much a problem. And a teacher who is teaching, especially lady teacher, should keep the hand on the shoulder of the child so that the child's movement may be lesser. I cannot exactly show you so that someday the child is aware that whenever some sort of distraction is done, we can minimize the distraction by this just to present. And it is an understanding between this ADHD child and the teacher. Or see it in such a way that the teacher is given them the primary, uh, what do you say, early information that this way I may look at you, so you should care, be careful. So there can be an understanding between a teacher and a ADHD, ADD child. Now accommodate different teaching styles. Now, teaching styles when we discussed, discuss, we have to see that a teacher is having a style of teaching that should incorporate visual, auditory, kinesthetic area. See, these are the teaching styles of a teacher. So one will be dominant. In the pre-primary classes, we know that visual things are being shown a lot. Then a lot of discussions are happening. <coughs> Activities are happening. So visual, kinesthetic and auditory learning is happening. As they are coming to senior, certain subject, for example, maths, physics, chemistry, visual also is happening. Otherwise, majority of the time, auditory is happening. But I will say 
when you find, when you arrange the classroom, when you prepare for the class, there should be the teaching style of the teacher. There should be something, uh, movement for the children or do for the children, activities for the children, and projects, other chart, other things that will be so visually the child can learn and as teacher read out or explain auditory learning also is happening. So if you find to be a uh, see if you find a child with ADHD in your classroom, please go with it or otherwise plan it properly. Then provide brain breaks. Uh, that is uh, usually we say that. We have to plan. We should make a movement for the children. For example, ADHD child, you are the primary class will ask, go to the staff room, take the things and come for the teacher, etc., etc. can be done, but not for the senior classes. Then communicate uh, direct, uh, what do you say, directions and expectations very clearly. Very clearly tell the students exactly what is the misbehavior what sort of direction, expectation in the classroom, these things should be very, very clearly told to the student. But if they repeatedly do it, please tell them personally, not in the community. In the classroom, don't discuss, but call that child individually. These are unexpected behavior. This shouldn't be minimized. It should not be seen in my next class. But again, being a teacher should be aware the child will repeat, but again, repeatedly you have to. And you have to take care. If you say tomorrow you have to bring the books, you should check all the books if possible, or at least the book of this child, because this child should have constant behavior. You should be constant with this child. Then direct rather than uh, reprim uh, reprim uh, reprimand. See, you should tell exactly what the problem is faced by the child. Don't punish the child for any small, small things. Because if you see, if you find some sort of misbehavior in the child, call the child privately to you, not in the classroom, maybe the staff room or the corridor. Or tell the child, this is a problem faced by your misbehavior and you have to rectify. Now coming to autism. In autism, the senior classes, we will see it, but the primary classes there are. These children will have, now why I am saying this way, nowadays a lot of parents are bringing autistic child to normal child, but they are good in the functional area. They may be doing things, but in the pre-primary, primary teachers will be very careful. They will not look at your eyes. When you smile at them, they will not smile. When you call, they may look at you, but sometimes they may not tell their name. Sometimes when they say, they may respect, what is, what is your name? They may say, what is your name? My name is Benny. They may say such a way. So these things are common thing in the this one. And the senior classes, automatically a child who is coming to senior class, always, if it is a severe autistic functional child, shadow mother should be there or the somebody should be there or the child will not go to that period. Why I am saying such a way? Now, to my experience, all the autistic children, I have requested parents to be shadow so that the adult may be sitting in the classroom and looking uh, learning areas. Those things I will discuss later stage. And basic, these things are basic because uh, we don't have much problem with the Now, other area is celebrate privacy. Celebrate privacy students are very rare to our school system. Now, yesterday also there was a direction from the uh, CBSC board that many of the schools are having only the ground floor, all the equipments for these children, second floor, third floor, it is not there. It is, which is becoming a mandatory, but CP children, if their brain is not affected, they will be very good. Sometime, if the child is having problem with vocabulary, 
expressive learning or maybe oral learning may be good expressive learning uh, writing uh, area may be less then they can house scribe it is permitted but we have to see some talent there we should be there with the child otherwise the child cannot write for the examination through scribe or individually we have students with i have i will show in the iep's how it is been done it is there but again very rarely students are coming now the coming to the remediation these are the areas which we have commonly seen these are the children who are coming special children coming to our normal schools now remediation discover the special needs of your child first thing that will be done develop animal goals and short term objectives see we cannot teach anything and everything to a child or uh, what is a challenged child or disabled child unless the task to be taught begin instruction at the child's level decide how to teach now why i am saying such a way a teacher when we prepare we are preparing the teacher uh, teaching material for the high achiever average children and low children so find out now we have four category special children also are there they may be very good in but only thing is their certain area will be affected so be careful if you come to that area you have to match with it now select appropriate words for the child provide opportunity for the student to experience success that also is very important we have to even the stage program other area every area special children should be given the chance so that they may feel feel one night give time for extended practices for example certain area they need more more practices otherwise they will not be able to so we need the help of the parents so we have to break down the parents and get the help and provide student with feedback you have to tell the child exactly in the person this is what today you are very good tomorrow this should be continue today this area you had a challenge these are the challenge faced by me or do you face it but this i have faced now how to match with you know work it out use multi sensory teaching method which i have told teaching style then verbalize the written on the board read what is written writing on the board so that the children with the uh, auditory area children with the verbalization may understand very well ask multi uh, choices uh, multiple choice questions etc etc these things are very much important now coming to the shadow mother i am not going to say exactly it is shadow mother is a mother or a person sitting along with a special child in the classroom it is with the permission of the school authorities now usually it is more seen in the pre primary and primary classes senior it is not there much but with the uh, cp children or severe autistic children who are functional may have shadow mothers with them now shadow mother we should have a special training if you are allowing they will not interfere with anything on everything of the school matters they may be a personal care assistant to the child only they will not judge the teacher they the shadow mother may be very uh, learned person for example a child of 12 standard of indian school musket was a uh, iit uh, parent sorry mit parent from trichy and she had her masters now she he the child was having physics chemistry max and computer science with english now the teachers were afraid to go then i asked all the hods to go to the classroom now i intervene after one or two months with the teacher this is it's fine is going on well now i asked the children children told since that child is in the classroom the teachers are well prepared because an autistic child functional autistic child is meticulous in anything and everything whatever is taught by you only behavior problem they are having teaching area they will be pakka perfect 
whatever you say they will write on the board if you say today one thing tomorrow another way they will stop you and say yesterday you discussed this way and you have talked this way please correct yourself so i am saying child of mother is a must for this now inclusive practices in cbsc there are so many things is practiced now uh can you see me can you see the board hello excuse me it is visible yes sir yeah yeah now i am because I, see these are the cbsc exemptions available there are so many this uh, exemptions are available so uh, according to the disability things can vary challenges are there for the children now cbsc circular also says that it is permitted but i will say according to the school it may have challenges certain schools permit certain school doesn't permit but according to cbsc all the school has to permit now the children can have oral test in the primary middle school we have oral test but senior test senior classes it will be scribe in the middle also we can start with the scribe but it is difficult for the school to find out or the parents to find out a proper scribe because a class lesser sometime the class examination may be gone what we are testing whether the child knows the things now spelling errors to be overlooked for a special child exemptions from one language that is there then now uh is a hidden thing 20% of great grace mark is given to uh send children indirectly or directly now shadow parent they can have a writer extra time for examination alteration of the subject exemptions from third language from fifth standard always is permitted these are the cbsc exemptions available now there can be altered subject or any other area but again alteration the school has i will say school should not take the responsibility of the alteration everything should be paper penciled and parents should take the responsibility school will according to me school should provide a environment for the right education is being a psychologist i am saying i cannot say authoritatively but the parents have to take the responsibility of teaching the alternative subjects but school will provide maybe one day two day because these are tutorials like it is easy because back in india i was bought by a village international school i was teaching them and the teachers i had kept for each children it is easy for them maybe once in a week but other way they will be seated in the same classroom and they may be listening to the teacher appropriately now there are so many questions available by the uh, but again if i have left anything i may be asked these are the questions which was sent to me by uh, dr salam thank you very much thank you sir it was definitely an informative uh, sir are you done yeah finish uh, jodi ma'am please we can invite questions from the you know participants Am I audible, sir? Yes, uh, you are audible yeah. to me. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for such an enlightening session. Uh, the participants may ask their questions, please. You can raise your hand, and we'll unmute you.
So meanwhile, they are uh, deciding upon the questions. We have also received certain questions regarding. Miss Jyoti, can you speak a bit louder? Uh, sure, sir. Am I audible now? Uh, you can use the mics a bit closer. Oh, okay, sir. And participants, uh, yes, Miss Tamarai has, you know, raised her hand. Yes, sir. Miss Tamarai, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Miss Tamarai is also a special educator. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, Benisa. It was very informative. And it gave me an insight that what I'm doing is in right way. My question is, what about the scribes, sir? So if there is any, uh, how to select them, how to apply for CGSE, uh, especially okay. for autistic? See, scribe is usually selected by the school itself. And usually with the help of the parents, we find out a good child from uh, previous grade. For example, we may have the scribe for 10th or 12th. So the child should be for 10th, 9th, and for uh, 12th, it can be from 9th and 11th. But better to be from the 9th itself. Sorry, uh, 11th itself for the 12th. Now, sending to the CBSE, we have to send all the details particular to your scribe, what is a, a scribe. You have to send the photo, ID, ID photo, and the details of this child. Some sort of document should be sent from the school side. Even the child uh, indicating that child belongs to previous grade. For example, 10th grade, 9th grade. So that certificate, the studying certificate has to be sent to the CBSC. So that the CBSC may allow that. So you cannot change the scribe after that once the permission is granted yes so we uh, by the time Anything as else? a special educator or a, so one more story sorry sir so as a special educator so we have to train the scribe also is it necessary for that or all those things part no will we will not parents? see whatever orally spoken why the child is written by the scribe nothing else no uh, training but always no. better Studious child and eligible handwriting child write as a scribe. Why I am saying, see, though uh, spelling errors are omitted because the scribe is writing and other things mm -hmm. are omitted, still better mm -hmm. the child may be a good child because at the end we know that the child better has to be expressed very well the paper. Because the child who is speaking may lose certain words, sentences, etc. Uh -huh. So exactly the answer may be written to extend. For example, incomplete sentence may be corrected properly by a non-child. Well, but always better to uh, school to select with the permission of the uh, parents. So parents may say few children's name and the parents should get permission from those parents and uh, bring all the documents to you, not you take the documents. Why the parents should take the documents tomorrow? See, there are uh, uh, links between the parent and the child. Means the scribe. Because uh, late come, uh, you cannot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Dr. Benny, uh, can you close the uh, PPT, the uh, share, screen share? Yes, okay. yes. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. It must have resolved the query of many of the educators present here. Next, we have is Mr. Ramesh. He raised his hand. Mr. Ramesh, you can unmute yourself. Mr. Ramesh. Mr. Ramesh has gone. Okay. Jodi, may you can read out the questions we have, you know, received. Uh, yes, definitely. Sir. Uh, the next question that. Uh, we have received from our participants is about the curriculum. How to plan the curriculum, sir? That will help uh, to teach the children uh, with special needs, be it any one of them, which we have discussed in the session. 
along with the uh, normal children like in an inclusive classroom see inclusion is a common nomena it is a phenomena so all the lesson plan is prepared by for the common children of the classroom that is intact but when you prepare the teaching style you should see that see for example before we were seeing the teaching style only for the uh, high achievers low achievers and the average children now you should consider the special children also are there in your classroom so automatically you should give something to them for example in your a uh, visual area you should increase little bit those portions so that their multi sensory organs are being used to accumulate those area which you are discussing and we important subject when you discuss please repeatedly say once again and in the remedial session those teachers may take those areas alone if the child has not understood clearly why i am saying remedial area any special children who are above 9 and 9 10 11 12 those children should have remedial classes why because it should be the responsibility of the parents and they may be sent for tuitions but tuition should be one to one it's very important because remedial classes are not tuition so the payment may be higher for the parent because they are going to be higher achievers so the parents have to be little careful teachers should be preparing as normal only only thing is instead of three they should put into special children also consideration in the teaching style yes thank you thank you sir i believe this must be really helpful for all the educators present here uh, the next question uh, which i have with me is how to select the rubrics for these Uh, special need children according to me there is no much need of rubric instead of that the teachers should be aware what are the area the child is exempted why i am saying uh, the teacher should be aware about uh, the exemptions available any children having accommodation so they should think that there is accommodation available and instruction what sort of instruction should i give and intervention how the behavior if it is disrupted the classroom is disrupted how it should be managed properly should be uh, properly seen by the child so do you think that spellings or grammar should be a major factor when we assess these students it is not a matter at all this is accepted by the cbsc spelling errors grammar errors will be accepted but minimum uh, by reading we should know the child has written this child has understood for example a child according to me for example i am taking a mango tree normal child has to write exactly about the branches the fruits etc etc the child has to say ah uh, it's a tree like so it will have mangoes so many explanation whereby the ch- the teacher understand that the child has understood the mango tree and explaining because always should be clear the child is having the expressive problem it can be verbal or written so expressive language challenges will be there so language barrier will be there for any of the sen children than the autistic autistic children will not have much challenge in the verbal area yes thank you so much so i think the sensor would have put a lot of educators at ease the next we have with us is how to accommodate visually impaired and uh, students with uh, less hearing in the inclusive See, class yes now without the first of all yeah of first uh, yeah i understood the question thank you very much sorry sorry for the interruption yes. i thought you are complete see first of all we have to think visually impaired schools are available it is adjusted uh, it is there in the educator system and auditory impaired schools are also available 
now the students who are coming to our system will be with lesser visual or lesser auditory challenges children so always the child should be seated in front of the teacher because the lip movement should be seen by the teacher and the child should have a written document if possible teacher should share the material with the child and some sort of remedial classes in the class senior classes may be done that is the only thing and in the writing examination they will have all the uh, exceptions of cbsc so slowly steadily they can write and they can have a reader also so that uh, the question may be read to them then sometime they may have writer the reader may be a writer also sometime they may read the child will answer the uh, writer may write so it is permitted so there is no much need or challenge for this children only thing is when you teach you should see that the child is seated in front of you so that the child is on less vision so see you properly see the board properly you give the material because don't stick that you should write these things no you can stick so that these things are easy for the teacher to handle thank you thank you so much sir that was quite interesting uh, another question that comes from our participants is uh, how to identify a special need child at the age of 4 it's very difficult to get to know i know you have discussed various parameters to identify so but still if we have to identify so that we can start uh, working at the very base root level how to uh, okay. go about it. now we have to take different areas now we'll take with the uh, learning disability in the learning disability in the beginning we will not find any problems only we will see the hyperactivity of the child the child is not interested in writing now a teacher who finds in ukg or maybe grade 1 if teacher finds a child is repeatedly wants to go to washroom or write nothing there is a problem in the wrist everything should be evaluated and suspicion can come hypothesis can be this child is is not commonly with other children that means there is a behavior which is not common to other students that is a first indication then send to the special educator or a psychologist for a peripheral uh, what do you say run through in so even before that sometimes screening tests are available in the net you can just go through find out whether your hypothesis are matching with it if you find difficulty send them to them now again writing challenge already i discussed reading we have discussed now comes autistic child maybe in the pre primary classroom they will have the problem echo whatever teachers say the child will repeat for example ye what is your name what is your name then only the child will answer automatically it is a small indication and the other thing the child will be always not looking at the teacher at all child will be looking at the, some of the board maybe blank places somewhere so the child it is easy for the teacher to find out the child is having some sort of challenges or traits of autism don't say the child is having autism child is having a trait of autism then refer to the portfolio it may be vice principal principal or special educator and clarify it never a teacher deal with any parents directly for this special category always let the counselor or the psychologist deal with it or the higher ups deal with it because the see it is to it is very hard to break a parent because nowadays the child only one or two and they are finding the child is having this challenge it is very difficult to accommodate so let the higher ups slowly slowly take up the matter and deal with the matter but don't go away from the first standard or second standard now cp we know exactly 
autism and learning disability already the problem here. Now we have hyperactive children in the classroom. We know they will not never open the bag. They will not allow to touch. They will eat from the other's book. For example, when they're going out, they may steal the pencil of others. So many things will happen. Repeatedly, if it's happening, please don't bar, bar, tell this child is doing instead of check the bag before going home. See, for example, you are going to show the bags of each child. Automatically, teacher will see. Teacher, no, this child has taken. So automatically, that child bag is closely checked. Other children are taken now. And instructions are given to the parents. Please put down everything of the bag and see that all things you have sent to the school is in the bag back. And if you have something extra, please give to me back. So two areas it is discussed. Whether the child has bought everything back home, other area, whether the child is having extra material. So we are not telling the child is the east thief. Because of all playing together, we put back material to the back, take home. So these are managed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This was really, really important uh, that we should, we all should know about uh, whatever you have shared. Another question that comes is that supposedly the child has been studying in the class for long and all of a sudden it comes to the child that the child is a special need child. So how to sensitize the class to behave in the similar manner with the child as the class was earlier so that the child may not feel out of the place? Okay. Now, there are two areas we have to... If the behavior doesn't have anything different, let may not be explained to anybody. Now, if there is a behavior problem, some sort of distractions are happening, there is a change in the behavior, then let this child be sent for to a principal's office or somewhere outside. And this classroom may be explained about the peculiar behavior of this child. Don't explain in the presence of this child at all. But it rarely happens. Usually it happens with the accommodation of autistic child or the parents, shadow parents. Otherwise, dyslexia child doesn't happen. It is understanding between teacher, parents, and the student. It is not necessary because other area, the child will be all right. Even ADHD also to extend other area will be all right. Only thing is the child may have push-pull. When we are still standing on the line, this child may make some issues. So always that child may be in the queue. See, the, according to the one, two, three, four, fourth child is the ADHD child. Then the teacher may stand with the fourth person. So that the child may not have much problem. Or if teacher moves, take the teacher to uh, according to the, the, for example, teacher is standing back, let the child stand back. Or maybe in the front, so that the responsibility increase and we acknowledge, yes, you have done very well, tomorrow also repeat, and you are becoming a leader for this event. So that ADHD child can be molded. Reward is given then and there, but punishment also can be there. We can indicate, but personally, the teacher has to take the child out and tell this behavior, I don't expect from you. This is not expected behavior of this program. So automatically, very clearly indicating the teacher, uh, sorry, the child about the behavior. And if it exceeds, we can tell the classroom, okay, this child is having this child problem. Please beware of, but don't put the blame. Usually ADHD children, if you commonly tell in the classroom without him, any blame comes, they will blame this boy. This boy has done this. Someday he might have not done this. So there is a challenge, better not to say, but in rare case, we have to tell, but teachers have to be very careful. A ADHD child is having a problem of a problem maker in the classroom, one. Now, there are sharp students who put blame on this child and this child may be innocent. So the teacher has to periodically check, verify, and if she or he feels that this child had done 
then correct it otherwise don't blame this child i have to add to study what is the surety that this child has done because nowadays cameras are available in the classrooms so we can cross check with the cameras there are students who will give better answers then and their answer they, we cannot change the behavior we can correct it later because there is a chance of misinterpretation of the stimuli thank you thank you so much sir that was quite an informative and enlightening session and i feel proud to be part of this session your words of wisdom have added on to the intellectual pursuits of our esteemed participants it is just a question of giving teachers the direction because they already know this but in today's session i know it must have given them a direction uh, that is they might acquire they might have acquired the skills and definitely they are going to make their classroom inclusive by implementing them i get various uh, inputs from the participants informative innovative creative and a lot many ideas were shared uh, related to your uh, webinar sir so our participants are quite impressed with the kind of information that has been presented to uh, us by you so i would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude and a deep sense of appreciation to dr benny vergis for sharing with us this boundless discourse I'm sure we will apply these tenets in our teaching modus operandi and ensure our young learners should reap maximum benefit out of it. We truly gained an experience that will last with us. Dear participants, kindly note that the link for the certificate and the feedback form has already been posted in the meeting chat box. You are requested to fill up the form with all necessary details. I Jyoti Jain along with CBSC Bharat Sahodia would like to thank Dr Benny Vergis once again for his gracious presence and enriching experience also I would like to thank Dr Abdul Salam sir for his magnanimous support and guidance to the teaching fraternity thank you sir for such a great opportunity also a special thanks to the technical team and Uh, for yet a flawless execution of today's session and most importantly thank you to all the education fraternity for their enthusiasm and participation and humble support i sincerely hope we earned the privilege from your time i would like to invite uh, dr abdul salam sir to take over thank you miss jodi uh, thank you so much more than 2 hours we have taken too much of your time and uh, deep gratitude to dr benny a uh, lot of you know comments are uh, there in the box chat box uh, about your uh, session uh, your experience being shared and uh, they are very happy about it and it is more than 2 hours i have no words to thank you enough uh, we are deeply you know thankful to you i feel that uh, the, the the topic is very vast and it cannot be covered in 2 hours or 3 hours uh, may let it be a general you know discussion and uh, i feel that we should continue this uh, you know experience share because you are uh, you are very you know uh, talented in this particular field so your service is very much required and uh, if you don't mind you can share your phone number with the participants as well they can contact you and also they are asking for uh, the ppt because the ppt you know uh, the sharing was not properly seen if you don't mind you can share the ppt with me so that we can share with the participants and also suggestion i as a indicator let us continue this journey of you know empowering the teachers because uh, especially educators yeah, are very less in number in india and uh, every school may not be having a special educator um, uh, so such training is very much useful for the teachers because they have to be equipped with uh, in the absence of special educators so i would like you to you know take uh, the next sessions in such a way that it is going to be a question answer session so that uh, uh, many participants they have you know uh their experiences bitter and sweet experiences they can share they can interact with you they can take away a lot of strategies uh to uh, be implemented in the classroom 
if you uh, do agree with us we will go ahead uh, for next sessions according to your availability so that uh, we we will be empowering our teachers in terms of dealing with the special needs children so thank you so much uh, dr benny uh, hope to you know have you uh, very often on this platform and also equally equivalently thankful to uh, sadiza ma'am and uh, bina jacob ma'am for your presence uh, your help and uh, all the participants uh, hope you have been enriched by this session uh, please be in touch with us uh, uh, i can share dr benny's uh, number if you require uh, so that you can you know contact him he is uh, at your service at any time he is a consultant in this particular field so thank you so much uh, jodi ma'am again and uh, dr benny uh, have a very good night thank you everybody thank you